Hello, sixth graders, and welcome back, and welcome to your last instructional video for the semester. Um, so I just wanted to give you a clear guidance for what is expected for this last project. Now, the slides that I posted on Friday, it's what I would have shown my students um, if you had been in class. Now, if we've been in class together and we had a full nine weeks, we've been able to get the full assignment done, but instead I'm modifying it so that we're only going to do two of the mini series. So initially I had students do four different uh, still lives. Each still life represented a different stylistic period or art movement, and I'll talk about that in a sec. Um, so instead, you're just going to pick two. The first one is the graphite um, pear or apple, and we're all going to use graphite pencil for that. And then the second one, you have three options, and I'll go over that. So the objective, I can use my knowledge of the art, the elements of art, form, value, texture, and color to recreate one fruit that responds to four different art styles. But remember, we're modifying this. You're going to pick two instead of four. So directions. During this lesson, you will build your drawing techniques while focusing on four different dry media materials. You will also focus on four different art periods. So once again, you're just picking two. Now we're all gonna do the graphite one, the graphite version of your fruit. Um, so when I say graphite, that means you're gonna use a number two pencil. And then that artist is from, the art period we're focused on for that is Renaissance, and the artist is Leonardo da Vinci. So we're all gonna do that together, and I'll include that instruction um, and demonstration as part of this video. And then I'm going to do three separate videos of the additional artist styles and the techniques that we use to create those styles. And it's up to you to pick one of those three. So your three options are, but not limited to, we use oil pastels for post-impressionism, Vincent van Gogh. We use color pencil with the art period cubism, the artist Pablo Picasso. We use markers for pop art Andy Warhol. Now, you're not restricted to the materials. Of course, as we've been doing uh, before, whatever you have access to at home is what you're gonna use. And for each one of those demonstrations, um, I'll talk about the different options that you have. So we're gonna look at the remaining elements of art. In the previous lesson, we looked at line, shape, in space. And the last series of the elements of art include shape, or sorry, include form, value, texture, uh, and color. So form, just like with shape, we can break it up into two categories. Shapes can be geometric and organic. Or if you look at forms, forms can be geometric or organic. The only difference is shapes are 2D and forms are three-dimensional. We'll also take a look at color. This handout here on the right is something I would have given you in class, but you do not have to worry about doing that at home, but I did want to share the information with you. And I listed on the left a few of the elements of art uh, color theory examples, those terms that we would have focused on. So. For color theory, you hopefully have heard some of these things before when you're in elementary school, but we did a color wheel color theory review. So when I say color theory, that's just how we organize all of those colors on the color wheel. And color schemes is how we place it into groups. So for example, one color scheme that everyone teaches and focuses on are primary colors and secondary colors. So primary colors are red, blue, and yellow. Secondary colors are created by mixing the primary colors. So red and blue make purple, also known as violet. Yellow and blue make green. Then red and yellow make orange. 
Then you also have the intermediate colors. So intermediate slash tertiary colors are created by the neighbors. So the primary color mixes with the secondary color neighbor, and then they create intermediate, also known as tertiary colors. So we have six tertiary colors. That's yellow, orange, red, orange, red, violet, blue, violet, blue, green, yellow, green, and yellow, orange. So the main two color schemes that we focus on for this lesson are warm colors and cool colors. So we can literally split our color wheel in half and place six of those colors in the warm color category, and that includes yellow, yellow, orange, orange, red, orange, red, and red, violet. Then you can also put colors in the cool color category, yellow, green, green, blue, green, blue, blue, violet, and violet. So those are the two main color schemes that we'll focus on for this lesson. Another color scheme is complementary colors, and that's colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel. So red versus green, yellow versus violet, blue versus orange. So another element of art that we're gonna focus on is the element of art value. So value is how we create lights and darks in our work. The two main things that I focus on for sixth grade art are just value scale and gradation. And then we practice using those techniques to create a form. So you can shade a form so that it looks three-dimensional by the use of value and light. The last element of art that we'll take a look at is texture. So texture is how something feels or might feel if touch. We will work on making smooth texture for your graphite drawing. Your second choice depends on the object that you pick. So the first one that we're going to focus on is the graphite pencil based off of, inspired by, artist Leonardo da Vinci from the Renaissance. So Leonardo da Vinci, this is one of his sketches. He was a, a man of many traits, um, many skills, but one of the things he would focus on is drawing from observation. So trying to make something look as if um, it was real, realistic drawing. So we're going to focus on creating a realistic drawing. I'm going to show you some examples. So I'm going to switch over to my document camera. Okay. So in class, like I said, you would have um, been able to create four different examples. So this is from a student from last quarter, um, and this is her graphite apple. And then this student decided to go with a pear. So I told students you can either pick a pear or an apple. It's up to you to decide what you want to do. Then as you see here, we use different methods to create the other stylistic periods. But for right now, we're just going to focus on the graphite. Now, what I want you to do is take that paper. Remember, you can use whatever paper you have access to at home. And I want you to fold it in half. Hamburger style. And the reason I want you to do that is because on one side, we're going to do the graphite. And the other side is going to be up to you to pick from those three examples. Either you're gonna go with pop art, cubism, or post-impressionism, and depending on what style you go with, it depends on what material you work with. But we'll get into that later in part two. But for part one, I want you to decide whether you want to do an apple or a pear. So in this example, I'm gonna go with a pear. And notice that when I draw, I want to make sure I draw nice and large. Now, I have that example beside me, so I can ref reference that photo. But you can also pull up one on your phone or a desktop. Whatever you have access to, pull up an example. Or if you have a pair in your house, you can draw that pair in your house. So to do our graphite pair, then I need to use shading techniques. Now in class, 
I would have you practice shading um, with different forms, et cetera. But for the purposes of virtual learning, we're just gonna quickly transition to the next step. So with shading, I have to think about a light source. So notice in this example, I can tell that my light source is coming from the right side and that's because my pair is lighter on this side and darker on that side. And I also have a cast shadow here. So I want to make this flat 2D fit pair look three dimensional by using a shading called, technique called blending. So notice that I'm gonna use my pencil on its side and I'm gonna gradually fill in that darker value. But notice that I'm not applying a lot of pressure. I'm just lightly touching my pair and just taking my time to build up that graphite pencil. I'm gonna switch pencils real quick, something that's a little bit more easier to work with. So I'll continue to Build up that value. Notice that I'm using the side of the pencil. And it's called the blending technique because I'm going in and I'm layering and I'm blending my different values. So I started off with that medium value and then I'm gradually getting lighter as I head towards the light. And one thing I would have focused on in class, we would have done a little bit more practice with gradation and value scales, but we're kind of skipping those steps and just going straight into the project. Just to give you a little practice in before you head into seventh grade. All right, so once I've shaded my pair, and notice that I've shaded in a curved motion, so I don't want to shade flat because I'm working with a 3D object. Next, I'm going to add a little light line to indicate my cast shadow. And cast shadow is that shadow that my object makes on the surface it's sitting on. And so our cast shadow is a little bit darker. And you could, you know, draw from observation. So have an example, research or Google pair drawing. Or you could, if you do have an apple or a pear in your house, you can set that in front of you, get a lamp, make sure you have good lighting, and you can draw from observation. Okay, so I'm almost done. Okay, so we're just gonna do a pear or an apple, you pick. And then on this other side, I'm going to redraw that pear or apple depending on which selection I pick. So if I pick post-impressionism, which is um, Vincent Van Gogh style, or if I pick cubism from Pablo Picasso, then I would just redraw that pear nice and large, same size. Or your third option is you could go with pop art and recreate that pair several times in that space, filling those space so that it looks like a graphic style instead of a pop, instead of a, a blended style. So this is just the first part. Everyone's gonna do graphite and then you have options for your second pair. Um, but I'm going to do separate videos for that, so this video is not too extensive. Okay, so go ahead and pick either a pear or an apple to draw. Make sure it's nice and large. We fill up that space, thinking about the element of our space. Then we're using our understanding of value. So it's light on one side, dark on the other. It has a cast shadow. And the texture that we're trying to create is a nice, smooth texture on that space. All right, so happy creating, and I will go ahead and record the next series of videos. Okay, bye-bye.